Hello and welcome to this Functional Skills Maths lesson at levels 1 and 2. And this lesson is on recognising the relationship between fractions, decimals and percentages. The learning outcome for this lesson is to recognise and know equivalence between fractions, decimals and percentages. It's important that we know this before we go on to doing calculations with percentages as you may wish to use decimals or fractions instead of the percentage to do these calculations. Our linked learning is that a percentage is a fraction which is something over 100 and we looked at that in our last video. We've also done in the past that decimals have place values of tenths and hundredths and the fact that it has a second decimal place of a hundredth will allow us to switch between fractions, decimals and percentages quite easily. So in the last lesson we talked about a percentage being a number over a hundred so that 38 percent we described as 38 over a hundred and we can turn this into a decimal quite easily. Because we know after the decimal place the first place is tenths and the second decimal place is hundredths that if we put 38 after the decimal place then we know that 0 0.38 means 38 over 100. So 38 over 100 is 0 0.38. That's one way of looking at it. The other way of looking at it is dividing 38 by 100. So when we did the decimals lesson, when we divided something by 100, the decimal place was here. So dividing it by 10 moved it here, and then dividing it by 100 moved it to another decimal place. So we can show you two different ways to show that 38 over 100 is 0.38. So now let's look at relating a fraction to a percentage. So if we have two fifths, which is our fraction, and we want to turn it into something that's the same as a percentage, the denominator must be 100. And the key to doing this is what we call equivalence. Remember when we did equivalence in fractions. So my denominator is 5 here for my original fraction, but I need it to be 100 over here to turn the fraction into a percentage. So how do I get from 5 to 100? Well, if I divide 100 by 5, you can see I've multiplied 5 by 20 to get 100. If I multiply the denominator by 20, I need to multiply the numerator by 20 to keep the fraction equivalent. So 2 times 20 is 40. And we understand that 40 over 100 is 40%. So I can go from a fraction with any kind of denominator to a fraction with a denominator of 100. Once it has the denominator of 100, the numerator is our percentage. So what we've done here is we've gone from a fraction to a percentage. If we want to go the other way, from a percentage to a fraction, then we know that 22% is 22 over 100. So that's how we turn a percentage into a fraction. However, remember your fractions lesson where whenever you create a fraction, as we have done here, you're always meant to look at it to see if it can simplify. And I can see that 2 divides both into the numerator and the denominator. So if I divide them both by 2, I end up with 11 over 50. Can I simplify it again? Well, I, I can see that 11 is a prime number, and 11 doesn't go into 50, so I can stop trying to simplify at this point. So 22% is the same as the fraction 11 over 50. So we've gone from a percentage to a fraction. Let's have a go at doing that little loop. So we're going to change between fractions and percentages. 
Have a go at these and see how you get on. OK, let's have a quick look at the answers then. So in order to turn fractions into percentages, I need a denominator of 100. To get from my denominator of 10 to 100, I've multiplied it by 10. So I do the same to the numerator and I end up with 80 over 100. So the fraction 8 over 10 is the percentage 80%. Let's do the same for the next one. So we need a denominator of 100 for our percentage. So to get from 25 to 100, I've multiplied it by 4. What I do to the denominator, I do to the numerator. So I end up with 12 over 100. So the fraction 3 over 25 is the percentage 12%. And finally, 7 over 20 we want to turn it into something over 100 and we ask ourselves how did we get from 20 to 100 we multiplied by 5. do the same to the numerator 7 fives are 35 so 7 over 20 is the percentage 35 percent now let's go the other way and turn our percentages into fractions so we have 40 percent which i know means 40 over 100 and then I need to see if I can simplify. Well, I know 2 goes into both of them because they're both even. But I also know 5 goes into both of them because they both end in a 0. So 5 goes into 40 8 times. So I'm dividing by 5. And I divide 100 by 5 and I get 20. If I divide again, both the top and the bottom by 2, I can see it becomes 4 over 10. And then divide by 2 again, it becomes 2 over 5. So 40 percent, whichever way you do it, is 40 over 100, which whichever way you simplify gives you 2 fifths. So 40 percent is the fraction 2 fifths. Now let's look at the next question, 28 percent. I know that 28 percent means 28 over 100. I can see that 2 divides into both of them, so 14 over 50, and I can see 2 divides into both of these, so it becomes 7 over 25. 7 is a prime number, and it doesn't go into 25, therefore I know I can stop there. So the percentage, 28%, is the same as the fraction 7 over 25. Finally, 64%. We know 64% means 64 over 100, and I can divide both by 2. So I get 32 over 50. I know they can divide by 2, so I can get 16 over 25. I can't divide by 2 anymore, so I'm looking for other factors. Well, 4 doesn't go into both, 5 doesn't go into both, 6 doesn't go into both, 7 doesn't go into both, and 8 doesn't go into both. So I can stop there. So 64% is the same as 16 over 25 as a fraction in its simplest form. Now let's look at relating decimals to percentages. So we're looking at this little relationship here. So we know that decimals have decimal places where the decimal place tells you what value you have. So the decimal 0.3 means we have 3 tenths. But if I put a zero here, I can make it hundredths. So it becomes 30 hundredths or 30%. So to turn a decimal into a percentage, we need to multiply it by 100. So if you have 0.3, the other way to do it, like we showed you when we were multiplying by 10 and 100 and 1,000 in the decimals lesson, is move it one, two places to the right, put your decimal point in, and any empty hooks, you put a zero there. And that turns it into 30%, 30 over 100. So there are two ways to do decimals into percentages.
To go the other way and turn a percentage into a decimal, then we need to understand that our percentage is something over 100 and our decimal places have hundredths as their place values. So 86% is 86 over 100. And there's two ways to do this. Because we know two decimal places after the decimal point gives us our denominator of 100, we can write it as 0 0.86 because we know these are hundredths. The other way to do this is to divide 86 by 100. So if you go back to the decimal lesson, to divide by 100, we move the decimal place two places. So it becomes 0 0.86. So there are two ways to turn a percentage into a decimal, either divide it by 100 or put it into the correct decimal places with respect to place values of a decimal. Now let's practice going from decimals to percentages and percentages to decimals. OK, so for the first one to go from a decimal to a percentage, we can multiply it by 100. So multiply by 10, multiply by 100, puts the decimal point there, and we infill with a zero. So we have 60%. 0.73 is the percentage then, is multiply it by 100, so multiply it by 10, multiply it by 100, and we've moved the decimal point here, gives us 73%. And then finally, 0 0.09, multiply it by 100, so multiply it by 10, multiply it by 100, puts the decimal point there, and we have 009, so that gives us 9%. Now writing a percentage as a decimal, so we've got 40%, we divide it by 100. So the decimal point is here, you divide it by 10, divide it by 100, and we end up with 0 0.4. 64 has the decimal point here, so we divide it by 100, so 10, 100 puts the decimal point there, and that gives us 0 0.64. And finally, 5%. The decimal point would be here for 5, so we divide it by 10, then divide it by 100 to put our decimal point here. And here we have a hook with nothing in, so we put the 0 in. So we end up with 0 0.05. And just to complete our little circle to understand what we're doing here, we can relate fractions and decimals together. So we did this in the decimals video a couple of lessons ago, but let's have a look at it again. So if I'm converting a fraction into a decimal, all I need to do is divide the numerator by the denominator. So 4 is being divided by 5. 4 over 5. 4 divided by 5. We know 5 doesn't go into 4, and that's where our whole numbers finish, so we put in a decimal point. We carry the 4 and we have an infinite number of zeros that we can use after the decimal point. 5 divides into 40 8 times. So the fraction 4 over 5 is the same as the decimal 0 0.8 by doing the division. So just do the division and it will give you the decimal. To go the other way, to turn a decimal into a fraction, you need to understand place values of decimals. So 0 0.32 means in mathematics 32 over 100, which if we simplify, we know that 2 goes into both of them, so 16 over 50, and we know 2 goes into both of these, so 8 over 25. So the decimal 0 0.32 is the same as the fraction 8 over 25. So to get from a decimal to a fraction, you need to know the place value. And then simplify. So we've done everything each direction on this little loop. Let's have a look at turning fractions to decimals and vice versa. So here are a few to have a go at. 
OK, now let's have a look at the answers. The decimal, to turn a decimal into a fraction, you need to know the place value. So 0 0.3 means 3 over 10. Can I simplify it? No, I can't. I can't think of a number that divides into both of those to make them smaller. For this one here, 0 0.16 means 16 over 100. These are the tenths, these are the hundredths. I can simplify it by di dividing the top and the bottom by 2 to get 8 over 50, and I can divide by 2 again to get 4 over 25. I can't simplify it anymore, so the decimal 0 0.16 is the same as the fraction 4 over 25. And finally, the decimal 0 0.35 is tenths hundredths, so it's 35 over 100. I know 5 divides into both of them. 5 goes into 35 7 times. 5 goes into 100 20 times. 7 is a prime number. It doesn't divide into 20, so that's where my simplifying can stop. So the decimal 0 0.35 is the same as the fraction 7 over 20. Let's go the other way now and see what we have. We're going to turn these fractions into decimals. So 8 divided by 10, using our dividing by 10 hundred and 1,000 method, means it becomes 0 0.8. 7 over 25 means we've got 25 and we need to divide it into 7. We know 25 doesn't go into 7, so it becomes 70. I know it goes in twice because 225 is a 50, and that leaves me with 20 left over. 25 goes into 200 eight times. So the fraction 7 over 25 is the same as the decimal 0 0.28. And finally, turning 3 eighths into a decimal, I've got to divide the 3 by the 8, because that's what our fraction means. 8 doesn't go into 3, so that's where our whole numbers finish, and we put in our decimal points. We carry the 3, so 8 goes into 30, 3 times, remainder 6. 3 eighths of 24, take it from the 30, leaves us with 6. 8 goes into 60, 7 times, 7 eighths of 56, so I've got a remainder of 4. And then 8 goes into 40 exactly five times. So the fraction 3 over 8 is the same as the decimal 0 0.375. So all those years as a youngster where you were struggling to relate a fraction, a decimal and a percentage, we've now shown you how to switch between all of them so that you can deal with the one you feel most comfortable with. Let's look at something nice and simple, just to prove how straightforward this is. If we have a fraction we all recognize, a half, to turn a half into a decimal, I divide 1 by 2. 2 doesn't go into 1, so we carry the 1, and 2 goes into 10 5 times. So we end up with the decimal 0 0.5. So to go from a fraction to a decimal, we divide the fraction, the numerator, by the denominator, and it gives us our decimal. To go from our decimal back, all we need to understand is that 0 0.5 is the fraction 5 over 10, which when we divide the numerator and the denominator by 5 to simplify it, we get a half. So we can understand 0 0.5 is 5 tenths, and when I simplify 5 tenths, it gives me my fraction back. We now understand that decimals have place values. These are tenths and these are hundredths. So to go from a decimal to a percentage, we multiply by 100 or we create a decimal with hundredths. So 0 0.50 means 50%. To go from a percentage back to our decimal, we divide 50 by 100 and we get our 0 0.5 back. And then finally, to get from our percentage of 
we understand that 50% means 50 over 100. And when we simplify it, we get 5 over 10 and then 1 half. And to go the other way, if I've got a half and I want to turn it into a percentage, the denominator needs to be 100. So to get from 2 to 100, I multiply by 50. Therefore, I multiply the numerator by 50 and I get 50 over 100, which gives me my 50%. And that's how we go back from a fraction to a percentage. And being able to do all of this allows you to switch between fractions, decimals and percentages really easy. And more importantly for this lesson is to use decimals or fractions to do your percentage calculations. You probably recognize this table from school. The purpose of this table was not only to get you to remember some of the basic fractions and how they relate to decimals and percentages, but to also check if you understand that relationship between a fraction, a decimal and a percentage. So 0.1 as a decimal we now understand means 1 over 10. And we know that if we put a second decimal place in there, it would be 10 over 100, which gives us our 10%. We know to go from a percentage to a decimal, we divide it by 100. So it becomes 0.25. To turn a fraction into a decimal, divide the numerator by the denominator. And you get your decimal. Remember from our lesson on recurring decimals that sometimes when you divide your numerator by your denominator, you get a recurring decimal. So 3 doesn't go into 1, carry the 1. 3 goes into 10 three times, remainder 1. 3 goes into 10 three times, remainder 1. So we remember that from our recurring decimals. 0.3 recurring. So to get from our decimal to our percentage, we can multiply by 100 so that we get 50%. Or, using equivalents, we can say to get from 2 to 100, I multiplied it by 50, do the same to the numerator, and I get 50%. Again, remember, some fractions recur, so if I divide 2 by 3, 2 divided by 3, 3 doesn't go into 2, carry the 2, 3 goes into 26 times, remainder 2, 3 goes into 26 times, remainder 2, 3 goes into 26 times, remainder 2, and so on. So we end up with 0 0.6 recurring. And finally, to turn 75% into a fraction, just simplify it. So 5 goes into both of them. So it's 15 over 20. 5 goes into both of those. So it's 3 quarters. So 0 0.75 or 75% is 3 quarters, because when we simplify our fraction, that's what we get. This ability to compare fractions, decimals and percentages is a really common question in exams. And they'll give you three numbers in the three different formats and ask you to sort them or arrange them or do something with them or compare them. OK, so here's an example. Order the following, starting with the smallest. So we have 0 0.25, 7 over 25 and 26%. So all we really need to do is have them in the same format. And it doesn't matter which way you do it. So let's look at all of these as percentages. I don't have to do anything to 26% because it's already a percentage. To turn 0 0.25 into a percentage, I multiply it by 100 and I end up with 25%. To get the fraction 7 over 25, as a percentage, I need the denominator to be 100. 
So to get from 25 to 100, I've multiplied by 4. Do the same to the numerator, and we end up with the number 28. So we have 28 over 100. So starting with the smallest, so the smallest is 0 0.25, then it's 26%, and finally our largest number is 7 over 25. And these are really common questions in exams. Here's an example of an exam question. Here are three numbers, 56%, 0 0.48 and 3 fifths. Which of the selections below sorts these, num these number formats starting with the smallest? So straight away, we need to put them into the same format. So let's leave them as percentages. So I know that a decimal to a percentage is really easy. I multiply it by 100 or understand that it's 48 over 100. So that gives us 48%. The only tricky one is the fraction. But when you understand a percentage has a denominator of 100, and we've got to go from 5 to 100 by multiplying it by 20, we do the same to the numerator, and we are now understand that 3 fifths is 60%. So to pick the correct answer, we've got to start with the smallest. Well, our smallest is 0 0.48, so it can't be that or that. Then our next biggest number is 56%. So the only one that has 56% after the 0 0.48 is D. So the correct selection would be D. And that completes this learning outcome to recognize and know equivalence between fractions, decimals and percentages. The key word here is equivalence, that you understand when you have a fraction of 1 over 25, that in order to turn it into a percentage, the denominator must be 100. So we've multiplied this by 4, we multiply this by 4, we get 4 over 100, which is 4%. The other thing to be aware of with equivalence is that the decimal 0 0.16 means 16 over 100. So to turn a decimal into a percentage, we quite literally multiply it by 100. And that concludes this lesson. It is strongly recommended that you get good at these skills. These skills are the foundation to mathematics and will help you in future topics. If you'd like more practice, see your teacher or go to Moodle for more worksheets.